Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now, I know I haven't posted in like a long time and I'm not really back, but I'm working on some really big projects right now. Anyways, there are a few things that strike more fear into people like me than PowerPC Linux. That's what relaunched my channel at the start of 2022 and it's one of the biggest dumpster fires that there are. But what are those things? PowerPC OpenBSD. And in today's video, I'm going to try to install that on this Power Macintosh G4. First of all, I want to give a little backstory about this G4. It smells absolutely horrible. It's probably a fire risk, and I bought it at VCF for like, what, 30 bucks? I don't remember. But I bought it at a VCF swap meet, uh, didn't really realize that it was probably a fire risk and plugged it in it works perfectly so um, until it doesn't uh, it works perfectly right so in today's video we're going to be attempting to install OpenBSD on this thing because Linux uh, both the graphics cards both the AGP graphics cards I own don't like Linux very much um, especially since the uh, the fallback driver broke recently ish uh, the fallback driver does work probably on BSD. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd imagine all the code is different, so it probably does, but we'll see, I guess, in this video whether it works or not. Of course, I have to pick out a period-accurate monitor to use with this thing, and I picked out the period-accurate HP 1920x1200 monitor. I don't have any monitors from this era at all, so... There it is, but I do have an Apple keyboard. It even has a power button on it, but I don't think that works on anything except the iMac G3. Now, time for a fire to start. Okay, the power button on the keyboard does work. That's great. Let's hold down option just so we can make sure that everything is working. If you notice a high-pitched whine, that's because this computer makes a high-pitched whine. More reason why I don't like turning this thing on. Okay, we're getting input signal out of range. I think that means the cable's not plugged in correctly. Time to bring out this monster of a DVI cable. Yes sir re this thing is absolutely massive. It's a dual link cable, so it runs really high resolution. And it's really thick, like look at this thing. Alright, got the cable plugged in. Let's start the machine up again. Yay, look at that. We have Mac OS X booting up on here. Show you the specs of this thing, because it's not very good. Sounds like a house fire inside the thing. That's just the hard drive. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 466 megahertz G4, 512 megabytes of RAM, single G4 in this thing. I think you can put up to two in one of these things. GeForce 4MX, that's our graphics card. And OpenBSD has no support for it. But, let's go ahead and take one of these things. Interestingly enough, there's actually a beige DVD drive in one of these things. Kinda awesome, to be honest. Are those the OpenBSD colors on the Finder logo? Is that? Oh yeah, that's a, that's an OpenBSD dude, whatever the hell that is. And then there's a Finder logo. That's so cute. That's that's I love that. Let's start this CD. We have the boot prompt. I think it's doing math. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Look at that VGA FB0. The screen is appearing. I'm not sure the best way to install this thing. Probably press I to install. What's the host name? Subscribe. What's gem? What's WI? VLAN is probably virtual LAN. What's gem in VSD? Okay, that's Ethernet. WI is probably the. Do I have an airport card in here? I must, cause. But we we need gem. Auto conf, it is connected. 
password for root account. Type in my super secret password that's definitely not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do that, that's fine. I do expect to run the X window system, yay. No. I don't know what the hell that is, I'm just gonna, <laughs> no. Uh, distro hopper 39B. Password. Yes. US Eastern. <laughs> oh my god, that's the zip drive. <laughs> I am, I'm gonna install it on the zip drive. No. WD0, of course. H. Hello, editor distro here. So, I made a critical mistake here. I should not have set the partition map to HFS. Now, usually when installing operating systems on PowerPC Max, HFS is really the only way to go. OpenBSC refuses to install the bootloader on an HFS partition because it can't actually write to them. Now, HFS is just what BSD calls Apple Partition Map, which is actually incorrect. It's, it's called Apple Partition Map, uh, not HFS. But on Apple Partition Map, BSD refuses to install the bootloader to a FAT32 partition. I think you can, but it doesn't. And because of that, you have to copy the bootloader manually to an HFS partition through either Linux or Mac OS. I didn't know basically any of this information at the time. What I should have done is chosen MBR, because then it would create a FAT32 partition. Open firmware on these Macs can actually read FAT32, but the disadvantage to using it is you can't bless a file on FAT32, so it will never show up in the option menu no matter how much you try. But uh, if you just use open firmware to manually select the boot device, it'll work fine. In my case, what I ended up doing is just reinstalling the entirety of Mac OS X, and then reinstalling OpenBSD as a dual boot with that install of Mac OS X, so that I could finally actually copy over the required boot files from the CD to an HFS Plus partition. Alright guys, I reinstalled the entirety of Mac OS X on this thing. Wipes BSD off of it. Time to start again. Try again. Completely from scratch. But keep Mac OS X this time around. Here we are. We are now running Mac OS X. Again. On this thing. Do I have a Wi Fi in here? Yeah, I do. I have a Wi Fi card. I didn't, re I didn't realize. And I installed it off a USB drive because. Well, actually, this thing didn't need any funny stuff for the USB drive. I just held option and it showed up. I didn't realize that that was actually a thing that happened reliably, but I guess it happens on certain machines and doesn't on others. And we're not going to install any updates right now. But if we head into Disk Utility, the partition, we have this free space here, and that's where BSD is going to go. Install, fire risk, gem zero, auto conf, none, done. Yeah, let's do that. Yep. No. No. Eastern time. One WD zero. HFS. Modify. I think I just need to do C. First block is gonna be one one seven two 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 six four eight. And the length is going to be 117, 21, let's do 218000. Open BSD, it's right to the disk. Yep. And then we quit. I think this should be fine. We actually want to do HTTP this time, the first time around, and that's good. That's good. done and let's get going I 
just have to hope that somehow BSD didn't corrupt the entire hard drive to the point that Mac OS doesn't boot. And we're here. So now we need to copy over the BSD file. Let's go ahead and reboot first and just hope that Mac OS didn't break. Because if Mac OS broke, then I'm deleting society. Okay, Mac OS didn't break. Let's go. Let's go. Mac OS didn't completely die, which means the hard drive is still, like, functioning. That's awesome. So drag OFW boot to the drive. And I don't know if we need BSD or BSD.RD in there. I don't think we do. How the hell did the host name get changed to what I had it under OpenBSD? That's really weird. How the heck in hell did that happen? I'll just pretend it didn't. That might do it. Let's see. Oh! Showed up! Yo! Wait. Is this actually gonna work? Sure was a lot faster than off the CD. Root device. Okay, I guess it's WD0A. Is it WD0B? It is indeed WD0B. Starting network, reordering. Does this have to be done every single time the thing boots? Probably not all of this, but some of it. Don't know why SSH would need to run more than once. Yes! Finally! Finally the thing booted. This took way too long. I mean, even the boot process took like five minutes. Let's log in. There we go. OpenBSD is running now on this thing. So I think I have to elevate. I want to I want to see if NeoFetch is in the BSD repositories because I want to run NeoFetch on this thing. We do PKG. Oh wait, isn't it underscore add? Yes, it is. Never used. I've never used OpenBSD like at all. Yo, that's pretty cool. All right, now I have a question. I'm posing a question for you. Can we run X11? Only one way to find out. This is 466 megahertz, so black screen is not unusual going on for a bit longer than I would want it to. Let's try... <gasps> Yo! Yo! There it is! X11's running! Oh my god. I did not expect that to actually work. I guess just start X wasn't what didn't like me. <laughs> uh, oh my god, this is awesome. I think the only thing we have is X console. Isn't there supposed to be like some menus somewhere? Just 
running Bear FVWM. Oh, there's the room menu. Oh, okay. Utilities. Calculator. There's Xcalc. Edit res. That's the resource editor. You can just you can manually refresh the screen. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's actually running pretty well. From top. It's of course, just in a in here. I'm curious whether I could run a browser. I probably could run something. Alright, we have Dillo on here now. Let's see if it actually shows up in the root menu. Well, I don't think it will. Let's just run it. Let's see. Let's take a look at a website. Google.com. Let's take a look at... Um, no way YouTube's gonna work. The browser's way too old for YouTube. Look at all this crap. Yeah, nice YouTube you got here. <laughs> uh, um, let's do Macintosh Garden. Website that does work on modern, on um, old browsers. I think this thing's written in TK Inter. Uh, Macintosh Garden barely works. Doesn't even this this browser doesn't even work right. Okay. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. If you liked this video, consider giving it a like. If you didn't like this video, consider giving it a dislike. If you're an electrical engineer, please let me know if you if I need to throw this computer out the window right now or if it's probably fine. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it interesting and entertaining. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.